Hey everyone, welcome to I'm Adam. And I'm Bruce. And despite being one of the most talked about and praised line puzzle games of January, The Witness is receiving some unexpected criticism when it comes to players with disabilities and the issue of accessibility. Ooh, sites like VG247, Kotaku, and GameSpot have all spoken out about and addressed the challenges that colorblind or hearing impaired gamers might face when attempting to solve certain puzzles. Uh, puzzles that we won't describe in detail in case you haven't gotten a chance to play the game yet. Right, the ability to discern audio cues or differentiate between changing colors is integral to solving these puzzles, yeah. and The Witness does not provide an alternate method or setting that would enable those who face impairment in either of these areas. Yeah, so Elise, if, what kind of things, if you suffer from, how would that affect The Witness? Yeah, so if you suffer from uh, protonopia, which is red-green color blindness, sure. you will need someone to help guide you through certain areas. Yeah. Jonathan Blow will come to my house? <laughs> he will, uh, for a price. $39.99. That's not bad. Oh, Ooh, hey, that's not bad at all, yeah. But that being said, you don't need to complete every puzzle to reach the game's end. Therefore, you can bypass certain areas entirely if you find yourself facing any kind of limitation. Uh, so there it is, right? No problem. Yeah, I mean, if you can finish the game, who cares, yeah? Yeah, why is there an issue? Uh, well, there is an issue mainly because the accessibility issue faced by the witness have only come to light since launch. That makes sense. Rather than informing consumers before laying down 40 bucks before launch, or even at launch, there are those affected who might not have realized at the time of purchase that to complete the game in entirety, they might need assistance. So they might have plopped down sure. their $40 and been like, oh shit, I'm colorblind. Like, hey, I forgot. <laughs> you put down the money and then you learn that you're colorblind? <laughs> Ooh. How many people learned that they were colorblind playing The Witness? It's like learning you're gay at your wedding. Wait a minute, I'm what? I just pointed Joel Rubin. Oh, it's the backpack. There's a backpack over there. <laughs> and that being said, as we mentioned before, you can bypass certain puzzles altogether and just complete the game. Yeah, developer Jonathan Blow told Kotaku, colorblindness is only an issue with a fraction of the puzzles in the game, and our design focuses these puzzles in a small number of areas, so the workaround is just to skip those areas. Don't play my game. <laughs> It might not be necessary to complete every stage in the game, but when you pay full price for a game, yeah. you go into the purchase with the assumption that you're paying for that option, and yeah. when someone's telling you, hey, just don't play certain parts. It's kinda weird. But it also sucks that you have a disability, so we're sorry. Uh, so why didn't developer Jonathan Blow inform fans prior to, or at launch, about the potential accessibility issues, Elise? It's the puzzles, Diane, the puzzles. <laughs> Uh, so The Witness is all about puzzles, and arguably learning to, to play it and master its nuances is a puzzle unto itself. Yeah. So you might say that even knowing that there are certain puzzles that rely on audio cues or color stuff is a major spoiler yeah, for yeah, the, I mean, the game entirely. Yeah. Um, the Witness definitely is a game that doesn't hold your hand, and Jonathan Blow has always emphasized that. Uh, yeah, you're totally right. In an interview with VG247, Blow expressed his desire to avoid catering to the lowest common denominator. Uh, basically, any of you watching the Super Bowl this weekend. <laughs> Said Jonathan Blow, my design processes are driven by my own internal compass, rather than trying to satisfy some goal imposed externally. Boom! But I do have some kind of ideal player in mind when I design games. That player is inquisitive and likes to be treated as an intelligent person. Like me! I know, jeez, man, that's kind of high in my head. And then he sipped from his teacup. <laughs> and this leads us to some very important and loaded questions, uh -huh. which we'll just throw out to the audience. Yeah. Mainly, are games truly for everyone? Not all. No. Not all. Uh, should games be for everyone? I, no. th I would like them to be. Okay, and of course we mean this in the micro sense. Anyone and everyone who enjoys games should feel comfortable with enjoying them and being part of the community. Right. But is there an onus on developers to design universally inclusive games? Hell no! Oh, well, okay. hold on, geez. Uh, or does an all-inclusive design process ruin the merit or challenge aspect of some games? Yes! Definitely. Possibly. Not always. It might be making design it differently. Uh, was Jonathan Blow insensitive for not disclosing the game's limitations at launch or not developing a colorblind setting? Kinda, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would kind of agree with that. Uh, or was he simply designing the type of game that he perceived as challenging and fun mm -hmm. within the parameters he wanted to create it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I changed my mind. Yes. So yes to that one, not the other one. But see, he's not colorblind. If he'd been colorblind, he would have designed it for the colorblind setting. Uh, furthermore, if we promote accessibility and inclusivity, do we risk diluting the difficulty and intricacy of our games? Yes! Yeah, we absolutely okay. do. Uh, actually, here we don't have a definitive answer. Well, <laughs> some of us do. <laughs> yeah. But we are all for increased accessibility and inclusivity in games and the work that organizations like Includification and Able Gamers do. I don't like the word includification. That's, a, that's an organization and they help out gamers with different disabilities. I want to make a game that doesn't use the word includification so Adam can enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we do walk away, as always, leaving you with a question. What do you think, Elise? Personally, I think that Jonathan Blow put his heart and soul and all of his life savings into this game. So let's give the little guy a break for once. 
What? Mm. Just because he spent a lot of money on a game doesn't mean that the game is necessarily perfect. We have to make games for poor people too, Bruce. Can I just say that I did those color puzzles and they were so much fun! <laughs> Let's quickly show the clip where uh, Jonathan Blow's crying because Soja Boy is playing Braid. And inclusivity. You got it. You nailed it. Oh, yeah, it's true. Oh, oh he stopped. He stopped. <laughs> <laughs> In games and the work that organizations and the inclusification of able gamers do. <laughs> What happened here? Hang on, oh, hang on. You froze there for a second. Oh, then hit the reboot. Thank you, back up. <laughs> All right, back up. Okay, hey. uh, so, so those are organizations. Includification. Includification. That's a thing, yeah. Includification you know, you, you, you take the ending, yeah, you like you did the first time. Yeah, you got it.